Buenos dias, mis amigos. Okay, in Matthew 24, Jesus says, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. All right, and so I point this out because this is what we're seeing in the world today everywhere. And I want to give another example here. We're going to examine this video here by New Life Geneva. And we're going to I'm going to play a little bit of a clip here just to give an idea of what these guys are teaching. And answer the next three questions from Micah 4, 1 through 3. And Micah 4, 1 through 3 says, And it will come about in the last days that the mountain of the house of the Lord will be established as the chief of the mountains. It will be raised above the hills, and the people will stream to it. Many nations will come and say, Come and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, <laughs> the house of our God, of Jacob, that he may teach us of his ways, and then we will walk in his paths, for out of science shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And verse 3, and he will judge between peoples and render decisions for mighty distant nations. Then they will hammer their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations will not lift up sword against nation, and never again will they train for war. Each of them will sit under his vine and under his fig tree, and with no one to make them afraid, for the mouth of the Lord of hosts has spoken. To verse 3. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. That's okay. Verse four was a was a, a good one. <laughs> bonus. <laughs> yeah, bonus. What an amazing time that will be um, when Jesus reigns here on this earth, and nations will come to Him, people will be drawn to Him. Uh, his kingdom reign will be a kingdom of peace. Uh, nations will no longer war against each other. They will rest. Uh, this scripture here basically that says uh, and I used verse 4 sorry each of them will sit under his vine and under his fig tree with no one to make them afraid in other words we will be able to enjoy the possessions that God has given us without any fear of anybody stealing them that's the way the world's going to operate folks it'll be amazing when I was a kid, I lived in a neighborhood where nobody locked the doors of their houses, of their cars. Maybe some of you remember those days, because everybody knew everybody. We saw each other all the time, which was a good and a bad thing. As a little kid, because everybody knew everybody's kids, there were times things got back to my parents before I did, and it wasn't good. <laughs> but it was good in the sense that, you know, everybody took responsibility for everybody else's kids. It's just the way that it was. So this time, this millennial reign of Christ is going to be such an amazing time of peace and rest and God's, through His Son Jesus Christ, establishing the norm for this whole world. It'll be, in some respects, heaven here on earth. Because All right, so <clears throat> yeah, I, the thing is, th this is a big problem, huge problem. He's talking about Micah 4 and talking about a world of peace. And he's uh, talking about it in uh, the context of a thousand year period. Now, those of us that are born of God, we do not put our hope into a thousand year period. That's nothing. And then that's not what it's talking about either. Okay, first of all, in Revelation 20, we see that the thousand years expire. So, you're preaching a kingdom that comes to an end 
So that's a problem. That's a huge problem. So this is what, you know, I notice everybody does. I, all these false teachers, they teach this idea of a millennial reign and then they ignore the fact that this thousand years comes to an end and at the end of the thousand years then Satan goes out to gather together a whole bunch of people well in your scenario if this thousand years occurs after Jesus returns who is Satan gathering can you answer that all right and so you're left with two choices the saved or the unsaved if you say the unsaved then you are saying that when Jesus comes it's not the end of the world and therefore you are saying that there are there's a second chance to be saved okay now you can't do that you can't do that otherwise the end of the world is not the end of the world and so then your other option is to say they're saved people and you can't do that either so there's something wrong with what you're teaching alright so because you can't say it's to save people because fire comes down from God out of heaven and, and destroys them so backtrack a little bit you say well, okay there's unsaved people living in a time when there's no sin there's no death <clears throat> well that's a problem why I mean this is a just a weird scenario that you're painting and this is they never explain this they never <clears throat> excuse me they they never talk about this right I mean so you got a thousand year period where unsaved people are not committing any sin is that what you're teaching if they don't commit any sin then why does Jesus lay down his life you're essentially saying he laid down his life in vain it doesn't make any sense and then oops here I didn't want to do that let's go back here let's go to 1st Corinthians 15 when it's crystal clear that when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven In, the moment, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall put on incorruption, and this mortal shall put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. So this happens at the end of the world when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. All right. So when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it's the end of the world. There is no more death. Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. The problem is if you're going to say that there's a thousand years after Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, then 
Revelation 20 verse 9 after the thousand years fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them devours who if you say the unsaved then you have to say well death wasn't swallowed up in victory when Jesus came in the clouds of heaven you see this and then of course if you say this is God sending fire down from heaven and devouring saved people you're an absolute lunatic but that's what I'm saying what these guys are teaching is lunacy it doesn't make any sense the last trump is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven there shouldn't be any doubt about it Jesus Christ is the first fruits of the resurrected and then when he comes in the clouds of heaven we are resurrected with him at the last trump is the end of the world all right for he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet so when he comes in the clouds of heaven we are lifted up to meet the lord in the air our enemy is gathered at our feet Revelation 20 verse 8 to gather them to battle they are gathered at our feet we're up in the Lord with we're I'm sorry we're up in the air with the Lord Jesus and fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them the last enemy that should be destroyed is death so that's the end of death when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven this is all throughout the Bible so this is not just one place and and screwballing around and, and misinterpreting what it says in one place this is all over the Bible from Genesis 3 it's from Genesis to Revelation uh oh what happened there it is Genesis 3 verse 15 and I will put enmity between thee and the woman this is the Lord speaking to the serpent and between thy seed and her seed it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel this is when Jesus stomps his heel on the head of the serpent it's the end of the world it's the end of this world uh, and then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written death is swallowed up in victory the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death and first Thessalonians 4 for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord when we're up in the air then Jesus stomps his foot on the head of the serpent and then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written death is swallowed up in victory all right so therefore you can't have a thousand years extended and then Satan going out to gather people who the number is as the sand of the sea. That's a lot of people. So you got two choices, saved people or unsaved people. Obviously it's unsaved people. And because you have to admit this is unsaved people, then you have to acknowledge the fact that the thousand years at the end of the thousand years when it, the thousand years are expired it's the end of the world so on the timeline this is the end of the world 
Matthew 24, Jesus is asked, What shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? When Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, this is the end of the world. When Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, we are gathered together. We are lifted up. First the dead in Christ, then those of us which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. This is the end of the world. It's the end of the world. Jesus is asked specifically about the end of the world. All right. Every man in his own order, Christ, the first fruits, he, he has resurrected, ascended to heaven, promised to return for us. And so when he returns for us, it's the end of the world. This is echoed all throughout the Bible. So when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it is the end of the world. And so here in Revelation 20, verse 11, it is the end of the world. And I saw a great white throne in him that sat on it, whose, from whose face the earth and heaven fled away. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken from whose face the earth and heaven fled away. There was found no place for them. And of course the obvious reason for this is because there's going to be a new earth and a new heaven. And so when Jesus comes, he's going to make all things new. Alright, so this is the end of the world. You can't have two ends of the world. Otherwise, the first end of the world wasn't the end of the world. You see what I'm saying? What? And this is, this is the problem that I keep pointing out day after day. These guys are not getting this teaching from the Bible. They're getting this teaching from other men. And the reason this is happening is because people are not believing the Bible. They're believing what other men say. And this is exactly what Jesus warned us of in Matthew 24, when he's asked about the end of the world. The very first thing he says, take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I, Jesus, am Christ, and shall deceive many.